Welcome to Daisy's Divas. Hi, I'm your host, Daisy. Today, Diva is so much making a difference throughout the years. She started off in the hospitality industry, then she moved on to special events. She's a freelance reporter and now a well known journalist. Please welcome this amazing diva, Joanna Juvelis. Good morning, Joanna. Good morning, Daisy. And thank you for coming on the show. Not to mention she's a beautiful Greek girl, like myself. Hello, Greek. Yes. <laughs> and we have a great story we met a few months ago when you were covering for my brother-in-law's new place, John Tebow, and my sister, Elaine Zuzis, yes. for Good Night Johnny's. Good Night Johnny's in Burlington. And you did a beautiful story that we'll talk about. Loved doing that story. So first, let's talk a little bit. Thank you for coming out this morning. I know you're a very busy girl. <laughs> but first, let's talk about a little bit about yourself sure. and I know about where you're from, yeah. Belmont, and your children. So, Oh, wow, Daisy. <laughs> where do I begin? Well, um, I have lived in Belmont for 15 years. I, I actually grew up in Dedham, Massachusetts. And when I married my husband in 1995, we moved to Watertown, mm -hmm. and that's how I got into the Belmont area. Uh, I'm actually originally from New York, so my uh, entire family, all my aunts, uncles, cousins, are pretty much in New York. Mm -hmm. So I still like to consider myself a New York girl. 100% right. <laughs> Greek. Uh, raised probably similar to you yes. in the Greek church. Yeah. Went to Greek school, Sunday school. Yeah. Married a nice Greek boy. Wow. All that. Yep. And uh, we're married uh, 28 years. We have three grown children now, mm -hmm. 26, uh, 22, and 19. Still wow. can't believe it. It's like blink of an eye. Yep. Um, I do think my, my story is kind of an interesting one because I did study communication at Boston College. Right, I saw that. But then you moved on to what? the? I did not get the, the dream job in PR that I wanted when I graduated. Mm -hmm. Rather, I worked yep. at the Ritz-Carlton, hoping to, to just get my foot in the door and that I could transfer to their PR department. Mm -hmm. But that didn't happen, mm -hmm. which I'm fine with now. Um, it, it, that's how my career in special events launched. When did you um, go to, when did you graduate from uh, Boston that College. was 1991. 1991. Yeah. And then yeah. you went right over to I Love the Old Ritz. The Ritz, so Ritz Carlton. It was a great place. I interned there and then yeah. I got my first job there and it was definitely a great place to work. My Yaya, we used to take her. One of my friends owned a limo. So we would get his limo, the driver, and we would bring my Yaya and we would lo always had tea on a Sunday or it was just old world. Yes, and you overlook and the, way the they garden. Us, yes, which I think I take it with me forever. I actually still carry the little credo of the Ritz Carlton. Uh, we are ladies and gentlemen serving ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. I've never forgotten that. Yes, and it's it, so like you know, just something yeah. that I've had with me for life mm -hmm. now. You know. So you had that field, and yeah. now you stepped into your own business which right. was special events. You were right. making candles and centerpieces. So tell me, yeah. how did you get involved in that? Well, that's interesting too. I, I wanted to be a stay-at-home mom, but I but I also wanted to still have a little bit of my own money mm -hmm. <laughs> to play around with. And I, I, I felt well, that like was went, good. You were an independent woman, right? I went to yes. BC for four years, and if I could turn the clock back, maybe I would. Maybe I would say, you know what? I I want my mom today. I'll, I'm looking at life differently. But back then, I I really didn't want to lose what I learned from my education. Like I felt like. I went to school four years. Mm -hmm. I graduated summa cum laude. I, 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 I love my children, but I, I still want to have my own thing. Right, which know? is good. You, uh, yeah. How important is that? I think it's very important to do your own thing, too. I do. I mean, especially yeah. now, I have a teenager, and she could care less about me. So I'm <laughs> like, if I sacrificed everything for you, and you treat me like this. Right. No, <laughs> of course she loves you. But, but I know she loves me, but yeah. you know, I'm hoping that eventually they'll, they'll see, they'll appreciate everything that I did. Mm -hmm. uh, being a working mom's not easy. No, it's not. Know? Right. And uh, so I did do the distinctive occasions working um, yeah. in my home. I, re I distinctly remember like I would be on a call and my s I only had my son then and like I would like s leave him in the office playing. I'd come back from the call. I only stepped away for a second and there'd be papers everywhere in the office. He would just go through everything <laughs> and I'd another time yeah. I gave him a waffle and I thought he ate it and then when I went to put a video in the VCR, the waffle was in the VCR. Oh, so. oh boy. <laughs> that's <laughs> a cute story. story. Yeah. But I did enjoy it and so I, that's that's how I got into it. I was like, if I want to be a stay-at-home mom, mm -hmm. 
I like special events. Why don't I sell invitations? Mm -hmm. And then, because I'm Greek, right. I was like, why don't I learn how to make candles for the Greek ceremonies, christenings and weddings. God bless you. Which I did. I never wow. knew I could be so crafty. Crafty, and yeah. Was, my mother-in-law was like helping me make the, the bubunetas, the favors. Oh, really? You know, the little yes. pins that they put on at yeah. the christening. You learned how to make those? All of that stuff. Wow. I got some, I had a good source in New York who would uh, help me out with getting a lot of the supplies. Do you still do that anymore? I don't. No? Do you have stuff still left over? You must. I do. Yes. Oh my gosh, <laughs> wow. I if I ever get married, I'll call you. You can make something yeah, really special. I gave, I gave it up because then I, I started the career in journalism at 40 years old. Wow. Or not. Yeah. And you've been doing it for 14 years. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So you started off freelancing. So t tell me a little bit about that. Okay. So I lived in Burlington at the time. I got the local paper, mm -hmm. which at the time was the Burlington Union, came every week. And I saw a little ad, Columnist Needed. And I responded to the ad because I like to write. And I was like, well, oh, maybe this is a way I could get into writing for the newspaper. Mm -hmm. And when I responded to the ad, the editor said, you um, will not get paid. And I said, well, I'll think about it. Thank you. And I right. didn't call back. But then she called me again. Mm -hmm. And she said, come on, just give it a try. Right. It's good experience. It could lead to something else. And I know how you wrote about reflections. Yes, yes. yes. So, so at the time, it was near Mother's Day, and I said, all right, I'll write, I'll write a Mother's Day column. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did. And that was the best idea yeah. that you... That yeah. was the best decision, really, that you yeah. did that. And it the best was. idea, I love that. So yeah. you wrote about your three children. I enjoyed writing about motherhood and, yeah. you know, yeah. life in general. And then now <laughs> here you are. So when you did... Um, that when you were freelancing, did you, is that when you did the homes too? Or was this when you became a reporter? Oh no, so okay. yeah, I, I was freelancing, then I ended up be, being um, the Belmont editor. So I, I lived in Belmont at the time, we moved from Burlington to Belmont. You wear and, many hats there, Joanna. And I, and I was basically the editor and reporter for the town I lived in for over 10 years, mm -hmm. which is not easy. No, um, no, it's a tough job. It's hard when you live in the town you cover, too. Right. It really is. I'm sure. So had I'm sure everybody's knocking at your do door. Please cover <laughs> this, please cover that, exactly, right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. But then a, a couple of years ago... And we don't know how to say no. We discussed this before no, the show. No, we don't. Yeah. It's don't. like Greekness in us, right? Right. The way we're brought up. But then they changed, and they said, we're not going to need local reporters anymore. They didn't let us go, but they said, you have to pick a topic that you want to write about, and you're going to become a topic reporter, and the stories will now be regional, not local, which at first I was kind of sad about because mm -hmm. I, I did like what I was doing, and change is hard, mm -hmm. especially after more than 10 years. Change is hard. But I, I learned to love it, and my byline is being seen so many other places beyond Berlin beyond Belmont now. I mean, people are seeing my articles in the Providence Journal, uh, USA Today. That's wonderful, that's amazing. So yeah. so I decided I would focus on real estate, mm -hmm. and I did start writing about uh, historic homes, yes. haunted homes. Yeah, tell me a little bit about that, and I know we spoke before the mm -hmm. show that you had covered Joanne Sargent's home. She yes. has a big business here in Chelmsford, Begin With Skin, and yep. you covered her beautiful estate in Westford. Off a of Granville love, Road. I love writing yes. about homes. There are so she said many you did a phenomenal job. Yeah, they have stories. You did a like, video. So do you yeah. go in and you yeah, check the I, whole I, home? I tour the home. I love to meet with the owners. I definitely take video and then I put the video with the story. Um, every every house, just about every house, has a has story. A story. Every Especially house. these historic homes. And you can learn about the people who originally mm -hmm. lived in the homes or settled right. on the land. You know, it's funny, I'm watching something on Netflix um, about these incredible stories about haunted homes and all these phenomenals, but yes. what what okay. was the best haunted, tell me oh, the best yeah. haunted home. Oh yeah, so this was around Halloween time and I said, why don't I write about some haunted homes and there was one on the market, actually two on the market in Plymouth. Okay. And they were definitely believed to be haunted and I did tour them and um, they were even on a show about paranormal activity. Yes. And yep. they and they did sh say they sensed paranormal activity. And there was a particular rocking chair in one of the rooms. And they said when people sit in it, they experience things. So I actually sat in it. Right. And my husband was videotaping. And I was like, I don't feel anything. But then when I watched the video after, yeah. I could see things like, like light shining strangely behind me. And yeah. I'm <laughs> Not yeah. kidding. Right. So I, I actually do believe in paranormal mm -hmm. stuff. I yeah, do. I do too. Yeah. 
I do really too. Do. I know that there's always a spirit somewhere. And, I, and while I was touring the house, I honestly felt like someone was watching me, like mm -hmm. right behind me. It was, mm -hmm. it was kind of creepy. Yep. <laughs> so you don't do it anymore, though. You're not covering any real estate anymore. You're now you're no, in the food not business. As much. Yeah. Now I focus okay. on food and dining. Thank you. Hallelujah. Right. It, it, it really yes. is a lot of fun. I just yep. I, I loved writing about Goodnight Johnny's. Um, yep. Your brother-in-law's story is yep. just such a great story of how you know. He has a, a second chapter that yes. he's living now. Yes, you know? when he suffered a massive stroke. Yes. And he, this is, oh, he loves it, and it's doing very well, but it's great it really for is. him accomplishing that after yes. so many years. And it's more than just a restaurant. It's a place where you can listen to music, yes. live music. Yeah. I like the whole concept. Yes. And, it, and it's filling a, a need in, in the community yes. of Burlington. Yes, and thank you for so doing that. So I love that. writing stories about yes. new businesses and seeing them succeed. How do you say so then? Thank you. Uh, well, I just <laughs> was on Dancing with the Bell. I know. We gotta, okay, Pete, we have to show some pictures. I love that wet red gown of yours. Yes. Pete's going to show so us. Oh, fun. Now, where did you, the gown is gorgeous. Where'd you get the gown? That's actually Macy's <laughs> by You're Betsy kidding. and Adam. And when I saw it, because I was just looking online for things to wear, it called out to me. Yes. You know, and the song that I was dancing too was Save the Last Dance for Me, Michael Bublé, which is one of my favorite songs. Oh, yeah. And uh, at first I didn't think I could learn to dance to that song because um, it's kind of kind of fast. Yep. But I did. I had a great teacher. <coughs> Excuse me. Yes. And it was so much fun. And I have to be honest with you, I was so nervous right before I got out there in front of everybody. But once I did get out there and I heard the support in the audience yes. from people I knew, mm -hmm. it gave me confidence. Yes. And that's what you need you so with do. anything you do in life, confidence. Did, train, did you have to train for a while? I did I Dancing did. with the Stars here. Yes. And we helped raise money for Shed Park. You have to send me a clip. I will. <laughs> oh, look how, now where is this? Your election okay, night? Okay, so look how recently, beautiful you look there. Thank you. I'm not. I'm not on camera as much anymore. I, I, um, I'm more behind the camera. But when it's election night in Belmont and when there are races, I want to be there, getting the results live and reporting the results live. So that's what we recently did on April second. So you also have a great TV show, Joanna. Tell me about the TV show that you had, The Belmont Buzz. It was called The Belmont Buzz, and while I was the Belmont reporter, I, I had that show. I collaborated with Belmont Media Center. And then when it was my 10-year anniversary, um, I wanted to celebrate, so I invited the community to the Wellington, which is one of my favorite restaurants in Belmont. They named a cocktail after me, and they called it the Belmont Buzz. I would love that. You go to the Wellington today and order the Belmont Buzz. They'll they'll still make it for you. Well, here's the coaster. So we'll tell <laughs> John a good night, Johnny's, to make the Belmont Buzz, and I'll meet you over there. I would love that. And I, I have my champagne, that. but I think I'll try the Belmont Buzz. <laughs> That's awesome. And thank you for that gift today. Yeah. I'm going to use that. I'll put my little spritzer there today. Oh, good, good. So you've you're done a lot, but now with. You're not doing like you, ah, Casey. <laughs> but you're not volunteering doing the TV anymore. Now you're behind the scenes. Tell I a little bit about the that. Scenes. Like so, Pete. Yes. Yeah. So uh, at about the same time that my um, job changed with Wicked Local from being the local reporter to more of a regional reporter, um, an opportunity came about at Belmont Media Center to become their uh, part-time news director, and I went for it, and I got the job. Mm -hmm. And I, I somehow am managing to work full time and part time. Wow. But I think, you know, it helps that the kids are all independent now and yes. I'm practically an empty nester and I do have a very supportive husband. Mm -hmm. Which is partner, great. So that helps a lot. And I the other thing is I love I love both jobs. I love doing what I do for both. Um, so what I'm doing for Belmont Media Center is I'm, I'm basically the person behind the scenes, scenes producing the shows, editing the shows. You know, we have, um, we do Good health updates. We, we have author spotlights, Belmont business spotlights. And then we cover uh, local, big local events like election night. And that you're always out there. And how do you find a balance? Do you find a balance being a mom, a wife? Having your job. I, I really try. I try to keep my weekends completely free. Free. Do you cook? Um, that's the thing, Daisy. I am not going to lie. <laughs> I do not cook as much as I should as a Greek wife. <laughs> <laughs> But I want to now that I'm now that the kids are older. That's in okay. My spare You're taking time, care of yourself. Look at you look great. But in my spare time, one of the things that I'm doing, and I, I started doing this during COVID, is I'm learning to make a lot of those traditional Greek 
uh, foods that yeah. you know other people have been making. Like so, I now know how to make uh, baklava. Wow, good for you. I'm getting ready to learn how to make portocalopita. Yeah. Uh, so yes, a lot of desserts in yes. fact. But see, now um, you can have like a food truck. Food I trucks are make, so important. I so. can make pasticho. Oh, nice. I okay. That, I want to learn how to make moussaka, though. I haven't learned. All right, that. call it JJ's. <laughs> JJ's Greek cuisine. Uh, so yeah, I uh, uh -huh. I do surprise myself sometimes. I actually learned how to make a baklava cheesecake. Wow. I interviewed authors of a recipe on uh, all different recipes for baklava, and I tried their recipe, and I made it uh, at Christmas, mm -hmm. and my sister-in-laws were in total shock. They were like, you made this? this yeah, they're always in shock. <laughs> all of Everyone's always in shock if I do something different, too. So now that's my one of my signature desserts is the baklava cheesecake. <laughs> Now I know that you're involved in a few charities. Tell yes. me about, I know you're involved in Crohn's disease. Yes, because my son was diagnosed with Crohn's when he was 15. Okay, and yeah. how was he doing today? He's doing well, thanks to, yeah. thanks to the research that, um, you know, fundraising helps fund. Mm -hmm. uh, he's on a really good medication and it's put him in remission. Yeah. But they do hope to find a cure and um, so that's why whenever there's a fundraiser, I, I, I'm one of the people that love bidding on auction items and right. uh, doing all that, getting the winning bid so that I can support it. I think it's a great cause, Crohn's and Colitis Foundation. Yeah. And your dad, you're also involved in the American Heart Society. Heart, heart, heart yes. is uh, near and dear to me as well because my dad did die from heart disease yeah. uh, eight years ago. It is in the family. Mm -hmm. I myself actually have high cholesterol. Okay. But uh, it's the men in the family that, unfortunately, in their 50s, they all seem to uh, end up getting, um, you yeah. know, the uh, valves replaced because mm -hmm. that's when that's when the trouble starts. Yeah. You know, yeah. like him. Yeah. But um, I'm glad, you know, I can do what I what I can. To do you do charity him. events? Do you like MC any of the charity events? Do you? I have not. No. I have not. Yeah. But. You will. I'd like to. You're busy, though. Yeah. You're a busy girl. I'd like to. I'd like to help out. Like, with this recent event that I was part of, Dancing with the Belmont Stars, oh. I want to actually help organize the event next year. Oh, that would be so, great. Uh, if they'll have me, I would Or be a to, judge. You You'd know. be an uh, excellent judge. And I, I do like helping with, you know, fundraisers mm -hmm. behind the scenes. Right. Yeah. The other thing, well, you could do one for Belmont. You could do, yeah. like, to raise scholarships for the high school, for yeah. kids. You yeah. could come up with a different creation I do love on my your own. community. If and, you had uh, a magic, you're an inspiration. Oh, you are too. Please, <laughs> nah, thank you. You are too. You've covered so many people for so many years, and even in the hospitality business, and in your yeah. special events business, yeah. and making people happy. It's a it's a tough business. Yeah, it's tough business to be on your game all day long and smile, and then you have to make someone else smile. Right. Right. I keep saying I want to slow down, but I haven't yet. No, we never slow down. <laughs> I don't think it's enough. Because I don't. Yeah, I don't think I I don't think I'd be happy if I slowed. No. Down. Yeah. If you had a magic wand, what would you wish for for the young women out there in today's environment? Oh, wow. Just have, have a wonderful life. I mean, pursue your career, become a mother if you can. Yeah. Um, it's, it's so important to, you know, when you, when you are married, be, be in a partnership yep. with your spouse. Um, if you don't get married, that's okay too today, right. you know right. what I mean? Yep. Just, just you know that we were raised to to be like you you should you should find a greek boy you should get married right. but now i believe um you know if you find love great yeah if if it's not a greek person that's okay too as right. long as you're good to each other yep and um if you can't be in a relationship just just give as much as you can yes. to your fellow fellow men it's true how important is it to go out there and make a difference and to volunteer say i think it's really important yes because you're really self-accomplishment, correct? You can work and work and work and get your paycheck, but right. it's, it's, it is important to give to others. Yes, it is. Um, who's a role model for a woman in your life? Well, I would definitely say my mom. Yeah, and mom. why? She's my greatest role model. She's 80 now. Oh, wow. And uh, I was going to bring her along today. Oh, you should have. It didn't work you out. You should have. I would have loved to, and she would have. We could have gone to the Greek restaurant here in Lowell. Oh, the she Olympia. Loved There's that. a couple, but I know. Yes. She loves. So yeah, she's definitely an inspiration to me. Um, she just, I had the best childhood growing up. My dad, too. I mean, yeah. I, I, I consider myself very lucky. Yeah. They I, always made me feel special. Were you an only child? No, I have, I, 
I'm the middle child. The middle child. I'm a middle but child they, too. But they did always make me feel very special, and that's what I tried to do with my with my own kids. Yeah. You know. And your children are they in school? Well, they're all grown now. I've got my youngest is, is studying to be a nurse. Oh wow! I'm excited about. She's a freshman at Simmons. Oh, Simmons is great. Yeah. My sister Elaine went to Simmons College. Graduated. Oh really? That's a fabulous school. Yes. And my middle one, she's she's graduating Mass Art, and she wants to be an art teacher. Wow! So that's great and too. My oldest is in banking. Oh. With TD Bank. So that's a yeah. little all different. Yeah. None of them are journalists. No. <laughs> Did you? Are you upset about that, or you don't care? No, yeah, I don't know if, if there's a reason why they didn't want to do it. I just think none of them like. Probably writing. saw you on the go 24 hours a day. They said, "Well, I'm not doing what my mother did." You they, know, they She's, definitely didn't well, like writing. I can tell you that. You know, what's the best story you ever wrote about? Oh, the most wow. inspiring. Most inspiring. If you had to pick one, that's a really good one. I, I have to be honest with you. This one is always a favorite of mine. I, I wrote about a couple that was married. I think for over 60 years in Belmont, these Belmont residents, uh, B and Dan Kleppner, they've mm -hmm. become my friends. Um, I love meeting with people in person when I interview them, and I actually went to their home, yep. and they shared their love story with me. Oh. And I wrote about it. Oh. And then it actually, um, a woman who is a film maker, uh, an Academy Award winning filmmaker, really? she picked up, she, she found the story, and she included them in an HBO Really? Uh, series she recently did. I can't remember the name of it, unfortunately. Oh, boy. But, but they were Let on me know. Her I want to watch it. HBO series, yes. Did they credit you? Hillary and Clinton was in it, too. Really? Huh. I don't know if I got credited for that, but that's okay. Yeah. But, but it was just so exciting for them to like be part of this, of just, you know, about couples oh, and love. That's a nice story. Yeah. That's a nice story. Yeah. If I remember it, I'll definitely let you yeah, know. Yeah, let me know. <laughs> so, where do we go from here? Where do we go from here? Well, We're wrapping up soon. Yes, we are <laughs> We're wrapping it up. Um, I'm just going to keep doing what I love doing. Which and you is, do love. You can see it all over your face, yeah. the passion that you have. Thank you. I, I feel like what I do does help others. Um, you know, writing about re new restaurants, I, I hope I helped. Yes. Good night, Johnny. Yes, you did. And sharing stories like your brother in law's, mm -hmm. you know. Um, that's what I like doing. I like sharing stories and. Yeah spreading the, the news to other people. The good news. Yes. If there's one thing that you can say for women out there, what would you tell them, Joanne? What would I tell women out there? Don't ever give up. Right. Don't ever give up. At any age. At any age, exactly. Yeah. I, I started my journalism career at 40. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and that's not, I mean, look at you. You're doing great. <laughs> but you're right, at any age, you know? no matter what. You know, we all persevere and we all move on. And, and just that's... do what you love. Yeah, you have to do yeah. what you love. You have to do and be yep. yeah, be independent like you are doing. Yeah. Right. Well, thank you so much, Joanna. I have to give you my traditional Godiva chocolate. I love this part. For the diva in you. How did you know I love chocolate? Oh, I don't know. Every woman loves chocolate. I can't survive a day without chocolate. That's great. And it's dark chocolate. So this is really Even good for you. Even better. Uh, thank you, Joanna <laughs> Javellis. Thank you for having me. If anyone knows an incredible diva like Joanna Javellis, you can check out all of my links, my websites, and Joanna's information is going to be flashed throughout the whole show, and please give her a shout out. If you have a fabulous restaurant in mind, please let her know. Definitely. Thank you for watching Daisy's Divas, and I will see you soon.